You know what? What we should listen to? Since I'm holding a Steve Vai guitar. Is the Steve Vai Teeth of the Hydra song? You guys seen it? Have you guys seen it? You guys wanna check this out? If you haven't seen it, let's do it. Here we go. Steve Vai, the guitar god himself, man. This is it. I mean... Look at this thing. I can't imagine how much it weighs. What's the weight of this guitar? How heavy? This is, this must be so heavy. Steve probably had to go to the gym just to, you know, like do some extra workout to have a guitar that big on stage because carrying, having a guitar that's heavy is one thing. Playing it is a different thing. And funny enough, um, first time I saw Steve Vai was actually the first show I ever been to. The first one I ever been to was um, Steve Vai Sex and Religion in London at the old um, Hammersmith in Hammersmith. That was 1993. That was really the first show I've been to. And Steve Vai was, um, I had to go to Steve Vai myself because no one else wanted to go. So I had to go and see it. It was the Hammersmith Odeon. That's right. That's a long time ago. I think I was about, I don't know, how old was I? I can't remember. 17, something like that. It was incredible. Devon Townsend, Steve, they put a hell of a show and I think it really have a lasting memory. I still remember it. I was like quite far back in the seat, you know, but it was a lasting memory. You're able to create something that kind of inspired me to, you know, keep playing the guitar and I just started, you know. Sometimes it's hard to um, get inspired to carry on playing. You always need something to keep you going. And Steve definitely have put that in, I mean, guitar players around the world. So let's check this out. I know the song because I listened to the brand new album by Steve. So it's cool to see it visually, how he approached this music. Because when I was listening to the song, I just didn't get it. It's like, why did he make all these things happen? So this video is gonna clear it up again for me. Ah, so it seems like he has that bass obviously tuned to a way that he can go dum, du dum, 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 du dum. <laughs> and the sound, you can hear that the three, well, there's a bass there, the half fretless, and then you got the guitar, the electric guitar. I think the middle one is your standard electric guitar. You got the two humbuckers. Um, you got a bridge, look like the bridge is probably blocked since there's no bar. You wouldn't put a tremolo bar there because, well, What's the point? You gotta you gotta play the bass and you to get you don't want the tremolo bar to get in the way. So you would have no tremolo bar here, so you, you don't hit it and to play the bass. Okay, so I was really concentrating and looking at this thing. Where the notes are and how it comes about to put it in there. Where he gets to the bass, you use the thumb to tap to make the bass sound fly to get to the notes. So you're using a thumb to get the frets. And I can see why he's not using his fingers. The reason is that the bass is a bigger instrument. You're not tapping a guitar string here. So a thumb makes sense to do the slide to hit the notes he wants. And Steve been doing this for a long time. You know, he's been in the business for a long time, the Frank Zappa days. And it's great to see how creative he is. You know, after watching the Polyphia video, Steve, look, he's got his game. He's not, he's not standing still making the same kind of music. He's always, you know, bringing new ideas and fresh ideas into something, into a piece of music that he's creating. He's not just doing the same stuff, instrumental rock music. He's doing something different. And it's so cool to see. 
of course, we love Steve here on this Twitch channel. <laughs>know what's the most difficult thing about this okay can you guys guess what's the most difficult thing about playing this song what is the hardest thing come on you guys think about what do you think is it the guitar face as well that's that's probably the easy part not muting the other strings that's a pretty hard thing i think the most difficult thing the most impressive thing here is this how you're gonna break away from the muscle memory of when you think of a note, you saw there was a point Steve was playing a lick on the guitar, and then instead of playing the last note on the guitar, he went and played the bass. He went and played the bass. Someone that played guitar for that long for so many years, your muscle memories together are to get the, the like you know, you think you, you're gonna play that last note, you're always gonna hit the guitar. But he was able to play that last note, hammering on the notes, and reach for the bass and play the bass that completely disconnects you from your years and years of guitar playing that you've done for so many years how you can completely escape that muscle memory and then go you know what i want the bass there the visualization the feeling so what i'm saying is this to get to that point he must have played that instrument so many hours that he's programmed his brain to have another set of like basically framework that he can pick that up and go you know what my brain want to play the bass i'm just going to hit it he doesn't think about it because if you have to think about it everything going to sound a little bit kind of choppy and not quite there and you can hear the song there's a natural expression to it there's no like uncertainty you can't have that uncertainty when you play the guitar then you lose it then you lose the balance and you start making mistakes you know having that brain power to have another basically he learned a new instrument that's what happened you can't he's not even thinking of a guitar he's thinking of a different instrument it's like special it's I mean, the mo I, I was just, I was looking at him going, how the hell do you do that? Uh, the difficulty is, the hardest thing is the muscle memory that's embedded in you. It's like multi-core. He's got like too many brains. He's got like more brains than us. He's operating in a different level. This is crazy. Yeah. So think about this. Every time you play the guitar, you go, I want that note, but I'm ready to play the bass. Nah, it doesn't come. It doesn't come to you. And then you got that top one, which is sound more like a sitar um, instrument at the top. That's take some serious practice. <laughs> He's definitely on the Unreal Engine. That's just another level stuff. And we talk about how creative Polyphia was on um, the other song, on Play God. I mean, I think Steve Vai is just coming back just to tell us, I am the guitar god. Everyone is awesome, but guess what? I'm going to show you what I can do at this era of guitar. And he just carry, carry on evolving and keep setting a new standard, man. This is just so cool. Check that thumb. He's right there. He's doing, he's doing thumping. Well, he's not thumping. You know, obviously Tosin is thumping. He's seen Tosin play, you know, every night on um, Generation X. He's able to use the thumb in his own way. He's going to play bass with it. There you go. Not doesn't need an eight string. Instead of trying to jump on the eight string, Steve is creating his own instrument. <laughs> yeah, the eight string, ah, too simple, unoriginal. I'm going to do something else. That's I think that's what he's thinking. Again, look, he's hitting those stuff. He's hitting the bass while he's one-handed on bends on the guitar. Okay, all right, everybody, go check out the Steve Vai 2 dates because you know what? He's going on tour. 
Steve is going on tour and you know, he's going to be playing this and you're all going to go, he's not going to just do this on a music video. He's going to do this live. And I can't wait to see this live. I mean, I've seen Steve Vai a lot of time throughout the years on so many tours. I can't wait to see this one. This is like, you got to go see the God himself. <laughs> and I tell you, man, I actually spoke to Steve before he filmed this video. He, you know, I was asking about some stuff and he did tell me he was, you know, like weeks before filming, he was, he told me yeah, I'm prepping a video shoot. It's like, I, he had to, you know, he really put some work in there. This is like, this is just top level. This is not another next generation guitar player, man. This is it. And previous generation doing something that we can't do here now. Pay attention to his hand, his right hand, pay attention to it. Look how he's able to do two different coordination with his left hand and his right hand playing two different instruments. And just so you know, he was playing it on the thumb on the fretless. So we have a good point here from Vito. People say we get worse with age. And I'll tell you, man, I've got older and I got better on the guitar. I think playing instruments is a different kind of thing because the brain is still more powerful than the physical thing. And guitar, I think the brain power of music, the brain power of being creative is more important than, you know, being strong. It's not what it's about. We're not athletes. So seeing Steve being creative a lot, seeing so many players like Satriani making like more exciting guitar albums. Um, and I feel it myself, you know, now I'm definitely much better guitar player now or in and musician than when we did through the fire and flames, dragon force. I mean, I, the, the amount of knowledge I know compared to back then, back then I was actually a noob. If I look back at when we did through the fire and flames, when we recorded that song, when we made the album in human rampage or that, so I look back and ah, pfft, you know what? I was total noob. I had no idea what I was doing. Just like, and at that time, that's kind of like, doesn't mean you shouldn't create, but you have a different kind of energy then. You might not have as much knowledge, but you got a different kind of hunger to create. That's what makes that album special is the hunger, the determination we had back then when we were making our third album. It's like, you know what? We got to go it. We got to kill it. Sonic Firestorm was awesome, but we got to make this the killer. The same thing with Ultra Beatdown. You know, it's like, let's go over the top, even more over the top. So Ultra Beatdown was like the ultimate over the top Dragon Force album, I would say. And then afterwards, we had more knowledge and we were learning different kind of things and trying different things. Let's go. Imagine the size of this guitar case. Whew. All right. So what do you guys think? Do you guys agree with the way I look at this song? Do you guys, did you guys pick up anything that you thought you didn't think about? Um, like the different synchronization of the hand and breaking out of muscle memories to create something. This is, this is crazy. I mean, that, that guitar case must be huge to be able to fit that in. You know, unless you can take it apart and put in three different cases and uh, maybe it's doable. Yeah. Can I get one Hydra at my place? No, I cannot. I don't think they make them in bulk. Yeah. Mind you, my business contract is over. I'm not getting any free guitars. <laughs> but yeah, 
Great to see Steve. I'm glad Steve is making something so cool and still being creative. Just like these new guitars, you know. I got I got all the colors of this new this new Pier signature model. They're super cool. They sound really great. You know, absolutely awesome. They look. I mean, look at that. It looks amazing. So yeah, make sure you go check out Steve when he goes on tour and play this insane song and all the old classics, of course. Can't wait for that. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs>